So if you want to be really good at something, I believe that overloading that system is a good idea. So overloading the visual system and the hand-eye coordination as a general skill is not super specific when you're juggling. Like if you're able to track all these balls and that your brain just really knows where things are in space, that's probably a good thing for someone like a rugby player or a tennis player. They're still going to train their specific stuff, but there is value in being able to just generally have a big base of, of awareness. One of the principles for improving the rugby players that I worked with, I didn't really just consider myself to be like their strength coach or their speed coach or their nutrition coach. I took control of as much as I could in, in helping them to win. And that wasn't all the tactical stuff, but it was some individual skill. And if I, I know that a lot of rugby players, they don't really work on individual skill the same way that a basketball player or a tennis player might. So if we were able to overload their basic skills and their footwork, stepping off both feet, drilling basics in the way that happens in a lot of other sports, it doesn't actually happen in rugby league, I think that gave us a competitive advantage. So all the big guys had to kick and they had to pick balls up off the ground and they had to step off both feet and they had to pass short balls and long balls. Just within the context of warming up for sessions, I would have them for six minutes and we'll get a lot of stuff done in that time. Juggling fits into that same category of like, let's build a general base. Let's be able to, let's be able to track things really well visually, have great peripheral vision. It's well proven to increase the amount of white matter and gray matter in the brain. Particularly the white matter is well proven. Also increasing the density of the connection between the right brain, right brain and the left brain. So if the right brain and the left brain are connected together better, in some ways you can think of the right brain as being more about creativity and the left brain being more about structured thought. And so if we're able to bring those things together and able to do these sorts of patterns that, that are crossing over, so we start on the left, cross to the right, working in, initially when you do these things, it's like, well, that should be simple, but it's not. My left brain doesn't really connect well with my right brain. There's probably no disadvantage to doing this stuff. It doesn't have a high training cost. You can do it in before or after you train, and you're not going to be extremely fatigued from it. So what's the benefit of being terrible, having a really base level of hand-eye coordination versus having an advanced level. Like it, it doesn't make any sense not to do it in my, in my mind. This approach was applied with the Sydney Roosters in the two years when they won the back-to-back -back premierships 2018 and 19. They weren't amazing, but a lot of the guys, they got all three-ball juggle, a lot of them could four-ball juggle. And what I found was some of the most skillful players, like Joseph Manu, Isaac Liu, went a whole season without dropping a ball as a prop. They were the best jugglers. They picked up the four ball. They could do, you know, spin moves and, and stuff. So one reason or another, I always like getting the players who don't have what the best players have to do as many things that the best players can do. If I can keep getting the lesser players to be able to do what the best players can do, whether that's have the same amount of muscle mass, have the same power, jump stats, speed stats, skill stats, then probably they're going to move from being a reserve player or someone who's not that valuable to the team to being a top player. So Kevin's looking to make that transition from being a good segue. <laughs> uh, it's a tough segue. No, so Kev's working on, so show me, show me three ball to start with. Let's start with a win. So he's got the three ball down. At this stage, I'm looking for Kevin to be able to speed up his three ball, to be able to go lower and to be able to go higher. We've also worked, we started working this morning on the three ball with a clap. See if you can get the three ball with a clap. One, two, three. So you start tracking all three, and then you get your hands back to where they're going to come down. Three ball with a clap, something that a lot of professional athletes will be able to get this stuff going within the first 10 minutes, within the first few minutes of working together. Um, baseball players, boxers, cricketers tend to pick it up much faster. Soccer players, not so much. Better when it comes to the foot stuff. So now the big drill for Kevin, the next one, is to be able to get the left side of the brain working independently of the right side, being able to swap between two plus one. So if you've got, the, the prerequisite for this is to be able to juggle two balls in one hand on both sides. 
So we want to be able to, and it's, it's a good way, a good thing to do is to progress this so you can do columns inside to outside, outside to inside, uh, front to back, overhead. The more different ways that you're able to do the two ball, the easier it's going to be to transition into this more advanced two ball. And then ideally we can do that also in columns outside to inside. You are getting a different brain. Like a lot of people, when they look at the juggling, they're like, oh, why would I want to juggle? If you don't value brain, like what do you value? <laughs> it's the tool that we have for interpreting the world. So yeah, Kev's doing his sync stuff. A lot of people will just fall into that because it's naturally easier. So you, you work on, you do two, but you do, you're only having to do really two things then rather than having to do three things. So it's, it's less work for the brain to, to, to do that sync. It's not good or bad. It's just we're trying to get to four ball juggling. So you can work on your four ball juggling like this. And generally it's easier to get three or four rounds. You show us what you got. Generally easier to get three or four rounds of this than it is to do the async four ball juggling. So this one's more difficult. You see guys like Lomachenko doing this as well, working on general base of coordination. A lot of smart athletes will be doing stuff that other athletes won't do. That's how you get a competitive advantage. You have to do things others won't do. Just because it's something others aren't doing doesn't mean it's good. But if you're not doing anything that others aren't doing, you probably don't have a competitive advantage. Like it's kind of the, the definition of a competitive advantage is to be doing stuff others can't do, won't do, to get results that others can't get. I should be able to get this four ball around the back start. Even just the thing of practicing something over and over again till you get it and doing, doing weird stuff is something that if athletes will do that and they keep experimenting, then they might just redefine the game. It's the creative ones who are willing to live in a way that others won't live, think in a way others won't think. And just practice over and over and over and over and over again. If you're gonna play soccer, you have to do that. If you're gonna play basketball, you have to do that. But a lot of sports, Guys won't do it. There you go. That was like four or five throws. He's getting his four ball already. I gotta get one now. I did it like first go, second go the other day. <laughs> so yeah, you're saving it from chaos. They're all over the place and you turn it into order. Chaos into order, the Jordan Peterson stuff. Something ugly into something beautiful. That's the goal. If you can keep doing that, it's a good lesson for life. It's a good lesson for juggling. It's a good lesson for building a business. It's gonna get messy. You break it and then you make it nice again. Five ball. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you usually, if I'm getting over 50 on this, I'm doing pretty well. I get over 100 every few days at the moment. Not super consistently. One little error, it's over. But yeah, five ball juggling means your brain can handle a lot of stuff going on at once. Have a go at five ball. <laughs> What's the state? Just your goal is just to get them in the air to start with. So it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Across, it doesn't have to. You don't have to catch them. Just throw them. If they land like the opposite feet, so put three red ones in one hand, and then you'll be able to see. You've got six. Yeah. So if if I start with the three, the whites in the the right hand, you finish, and you're going to have. The white's in one pile and the, the red one landed on the blue one, but um, that's, that's a way to start. Just being able to throw them is a, is a good thing to begin with, and then you want to be able to catch them as well. 
The reason I started this video is because I think I just got a new best on my two, uh, three balls in one hand and I wanted to make a video of it. And I started telling this whole story. So I just got 28. So it's basics, it's not a complicated task, but it's difficult to execute. Three, four, five, six, I'm getting I'm getting consistent tens, which is better than what I've been doing. Twelve. This is what practice looks like. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Why not choose to be really, really good at something? You might already have your thing that you're being really good at. You might be a basketball player and you're like, I'm really good at basketball. But choose to be really good at something that doesn't really make much sense to other people. Like if you're a soccer player, I would encourage you to get good at tricking, get good at trampoline. Something that's like on the fringe of what you do that might just unlock a new level. A lot of really good athletes come from gymnastic background. So they work on the gymnastics and then that unlocks things. Weightlifting can be a bit like that. Weightlifters are able to jump very, very high. Parkour guys are able to land from really, really high. Look for extreme abilities and develop some of them, especially if they have a low cost and low risk. Consider adding other abilities that others don't have. And same with business. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. Even catch it when they collide. They collide here. And you're able to catch both of them. It's like your brain just knows where stuff is and is able to get your body to those points much better than for the average man or the average athlete even. It's not something that's really specific to juggling. Like there's patterns that are really specific to juggling. Like the, the Mills mess. This is like a fancy way of Messing up left brain and right brain. And yeah, it's, it's like a complex new pattern, right? So that is specific, but just juggling in one hand, like it's not complex. It's just, can you catch and throw to a, to a point over and over again? And can you, you know, visually track and execute? I keep getting the collisions. So it needs to go inside to outside. If I keep getting that circle going, there's a little bit of luck whether they hit each other or not. I'm not, it's, it doesn't require luck. If I'm, if I'm better at it, then I don't need any luck because I just hit the target that I'm trying to th throw to every throw. What have you been working on, Kev? I was trying to copy that. <laughs> Going for a cheap. How many are you getting? Oh, I'm not catching that anymore. It's trying worse. So, in, out, in, out. Yeah, nice. Five throws. Go again. One, two, three. I throw, there's no one way to get started, but I, I keep one forward and I throw that, the one at the front first. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Thirty. Do you want to? Some of the questions that might come up with this, like, do you need juggling balls? Where do I get the juggling balls from? It's good to get better quality ones. There are Uncom ones that are for sale in Australia. You can ship them worldwide. Uh, I'm not really sure what the link is, but maybe I can find it. Buying the cheapest ones is not really a good idea. They tend to break quite quickly, and I wouldn't really recommend that. But you can also just start with socks. Like, if you're not very good, they'll work fine for learning your, your three ball. So the best way to start for three, for three ball is just right, left, one goes up, other goes up. 
Generally, to start with, common problems, people will be going up searching for the balls, which will make it harder, rather than letting them come back down. Or um, throwing both at the same time, which doesn't leave space for the third. So you're going to be leave space so the third's going to be there. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you can start with both. If you can start with the left hand, start with the right hand, do that. Then you're in the game for juggling. There's plenty of tutorials on YouTube. There's plenty of tutorials within the Uncom app. You can jump on the 5.uncom.io app and you get free tutorials from me to learn how to juggle. I like it for the sake of sports, as I've explained. I also like it from the growth mind perspective. If you can continually learn new things and you can do things that are uncomfortable and do things that others won't do, then maybe you're gonna get results that others can't get. If you're not someone who can do things that others think are funny or strange, then you might not be able to get results that others can't get. You might sit right in the middle of the curve. You might be the common average person, which is not necessarily the best place to be. And you know, is really the point of uncommon success is to help you to have an uncommon mind, uncommon functioning ability to be able to unlock and do things that, that most can't do. So hopefully that made some sense. As always, feel free to ask any questions. If there was value here, please like, comment, subscribe, maybe share it with a friend and uh, look forward to speaking to you soon.